It's been incredibly well supported lately, 1000s of subscribers and growing very fast. A lot of you have loved the video and commented on it, which has really helped me. Thank you guys so much. Before we get started, if you think you might fall asleep, please introduce yourself in the comments. If you doze off, remember to like the video and subscribe. I'm always curious to know what country everyone is from, so please let us know in the comments and share the time in your country. Thanks again for joining me on the show. Please turn off the lights, remember to lock the door, lie in bed and close your eyes. This happened a couple of years back, around 2019. Me and my buddies, let's call them Jack and Emma, were all about exploring creepy places. We stumbled upon this old abandoned house at the end of my neighborhood. Now, let me tell you, this place looked straight out of a horror movie. We had to trek through some tall grass to get there, and it wasn't a walk in the park. The house itself was a wreck owned by some dude who ditched it in the 80s and never looked back. Jack, being the thrill-seeker he is, suggested we check it out. Emma wasn't too keen on the idea, but eventually, she came around. As we approached, there was this nasty smell coming from the place, like a plumbing disaster waiting to happen. Gross, right? Anyway, we decided to poke around. We found all sorts of weird stuff inside. Clothes in the freezer, dolls in the fireplace, you name it. It was like stumbling into a museum of oddities. Things took a creepy turn when we heard this weird chewing sound coming from one of the rooms. We froze when we saw a shadow dart across the doorway. Heart pounding, we mustered up the courage to investigate. But here's where things got really messed up. As we were about to bail, this guy in a dirty lime green shirt and torn shorts walks in. And get this, his arm was torn up, with raw meat hanging off it. I'm talking blood and all. Before we could even process what was happening, a neighbor yelled at us to get out of there, and we bolted like our lives depended on it. I haven't told my folks about it, and honestly, I don't think I ever will, but I still wonder, what the heck was that guy doing there? And what would have happened if he caught us snooping around? Gives me chills just thinking about it. I couldn't shake off the feeling of dread that lingered long after our encounter with that mysterious man in the abandoned house. It haunted my dreams, leaving me restless and on edge. Weeks passed, and I tried my best to put the incident behind me. But it seemed like the more I tried to forget, the more vivid the memories became. Emma, Jack, and I rarely talked about it, but I could tell they were affected too. Then, one evening, as I was walking home from campus, I felt a shiver run down my spine. It was as if someone was watching me, lurking in the shadows. I quickened my pace, the streetlights casting long, ominous shadows on the deserted road. That's when I heard it, the sound of footsteps, slow and deliberate, echoing behind me. My heart pounded in my chest as I dared a glance over my shoulder. There, just beyond the reach of the dim streetlight, stood a figure. I froze, unable to move as fear rooted me to the spot. The figure stepped forward into the light, revealing the same scruffy lime green shirt and torn shorts that the man in the abandoned house wore. My mind raced with terror as I realized it was him, the man with the raw, meaty arm. How did he find me? What did he want? Questions flooded my mind, but I knew I had to get out of there. Summoning every ounce of courage, I turned and ran, my footsteps echoing loudly in the empty street. I didn't dare look back, fearing what I might see. Adrenaline coursed through my veins as I sprinted towards the safety of my home. When I finally reached my doorstep, I collapsed, gasping for breath. I bolted the door behind me, feeling a sense of relief wash over me. But deep down, I knew that this was far from over. That night, as I lay in bed, the memories of that encounter replayed in my mind like a horror movie on loop. And as I drifted into an uneasy sleep, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that he was still out there, lurking in the darkness, waiting to strike again. I used to work as a security guard at a retail building in downtown, right smack in the middle of the city. It wasn't the most exciting job, but it paid the bills while I was studying. The night shifts were especially quiet, and I didn't mind the solitude. One night, while I was chilling in the security office, something weird happened. I heard footsteps upstairs, like someone was walking around. It was odd because the building should have been empty at that hour. I glanced at the security monitors, and that's when I saw it. 
a shadowy figure moving through the second floor hallway. It sent a chill down my spine. I tried switching to different camera feeds, but the figure seemed to vanish into thin air. Feeling spooked, I called the cops. They arrived quickly, but when we searched the building, there was no sign of anyone. The cops probably thought I was seeing things, but I knew what I saw was real. Just when I was starting to doubt myself, I heard a crash, a window breaking. My heart raced as I checked the cameras again. Sure enough, there was a broken window on the second floor. This time, the cops took me seriously. They searched the building again, but once more, they found nothing except the broken window. It was as if the intruder had vanished into thin air. To this day, I still can't explain what happened that night. It's like something out of a horror movie. Maybe the intruder jumped out the window, but even that doesn't make much sense. All I know is that it was a night I'll never forget. The incident haunted me for days afterward. Every creak of the building, every flicker of the lights, made me jump. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or something, was watching me. Despite my unease, I continued to work my shifts, hoping it was just a one-time occurrence. But the feeling of being watched persisted, lingering like a dark shadow in the back of my mind. Then, one night, it happened again. I was doing my usual rounds, checking the monitors, when I saw it. A faint figure moving through the darkness. This time, it wasn't just on one monitor. It seemed to be everywhere at once, flickering in and out of view like a ghost. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. Was I hallucinating? Or was there really something in the building with me? Summoning all my courage, I grabbed a flashlight and headed upstairs to investigate. Each step felt heavier than the last, the silence of the building pressing in around me like a suffocating blanket. As I reached the second floor, the air grew thick with tension. I could sense that I was not alone. The beam of my flashlight revealed nothing but empty corridors and closed doors, but I knew I was being watched. Then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the figure vanished, leaving me standing there alone in the darkness. I searched every inch of the building, but there was no sign of anyone or anything. I reported the incident to my supervisor, but he dismissed it as a trick of the light or my imagination. But I knew what I had seen was real. From that night on, I couldn't shake the feeling that the building was cursed, haunted by some unseen presence. I dreaded going to work, knowing that I would never be truly alone. In the end, I quit my job, unable to shake the feeling of dread that had consumed me. But even now, years later, I can't help but wonder what was really lurking in the darkness of that building. Months passed, and I tried to put the haunting experience behind me. I found a new job, moved to a different part of town, and did my best to move on with my life. But no matter how hard I tried, the memory of that night lingered like a stubborn stain. Then, one evening, as I was walking home from my new job, I felt a chill run down my spine. It was as if the shadows themselves were watching me, whispering secrets I couldn't comprehend. I quickened my pace, eager to escape the feeling of unease that had settled over me. But no matter how fast I walked, the feeling of being followed persisted, like a shadow that refused to be left behind. When I reached my apartment building, I glanced nervously over my shoulder, half expecting to see someone, or something, lurking in the darkness. But the street was empty, bathed in the soft glow of the street lights. I hurried inside, locking the door behind me with trembling hands. But as I made my way up the stairs to my apartment, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. As I reached the landing on the second floor, I heard it, a soft whispering, like the sound of leaves rustling in the wind. My heart raced as I glanced around, searching for the source of the noise. And then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw it, a shadowy figure lurking in the darkness, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. I froze, unable to move as the figure drew closer, its whispers growing louder and more insistent. In a panic, I stumbled backward, my heart pounding in my chest. But no matter how fast I ran, the figure followed, its presence looming over me like a dark cloud. I reached my apartment door and fumbled for my keys, praying that I could escape before it was too late. With shaking hands, I managed to unlock the door and stumble inside, slamming it shut behind me. For a moment, I stood there, 
my chest heaving with exertion as I listened for any sign of the figure outside. But all was silent, save for the pounding of my own heart. As I sank to the floor, I knew that I would never be free from the memory of that night or the terrifying presence that had haunted me ever since. And as I lay there in the darkness, I couldn't help but wonder what other horrors lurked in the shadows, waiting to be unleashed upon the world. I used to work the graveyard shift as a janitor at this office building tucked away in a quiet business plaza on the outskirts of town. It was the kind of place that gave off more of an isolated vibe than a spooky one. But let me tell you, working alone in an empty building at night, especially during a blizzard, can mess with your head. One night, during one of those nasty blizzards, I was doing my usual routine, making sure everything was clean and tidy. I always made sure to lock up tight, because, let's face it, being a lone female janitor in the dead of night is like painting a target on your back. As I was going about my business, I realized I forgot something downstairs. When I headed back down, I saw something that sent shivers down my spine. The side door was wide open, letting in the freezing wind and snow. Now, there was no reason that door should have been open. I quickly checked outside, thinking maybe the building owner had shown up unexpectedly. But there were no cars except mine. That's when the chill really set in. I went back inside and started searching the building, starting with the basement. Nothing seemed out of place, but the feeling of unease wouldn't go away. And then, things got even weirder. Lights started flickering and going out, one by one, as if someone, or something, was messing with the electricity. I heard the door bang open again, rattling in the wind. That's when I knew something wasn't right. I hightailed it to the nearest office and locked myself in, hoping whatever was out there wouldn't find me. Eventually, I had to face my fears and finish my shift. But let me tell you, I've never cleaned faster in my life. Looking back, I probably should have called the cops. But luckily, nothing ever came of it. Still, that night will always be burned into my memory as the night I came face to face with something I couldn't explain. And I pray I never have to experience anything like it again. The next few nights were nerve-wracking. Every creak of the building, every gust of wind made me jump. I was constantly on edge, half expecting something to jump out at me from the shadows. But as the days passed, things started to calm down. I convinced myself that it had just been a freak occurrence, maybe a faulty door or a power surge. After all, there was no evidence of anyone else being in the building. I tried to put the whole incident behind me and focus on my work. But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. Then, one night, it happened again. I was doing my rounds when I heard it, a faint scratching sound coming from the basement. My heart started pounding in my chest as I cautiously made my way downstairs. The basement was dark, illuminated only by the dim glow of the emergency lights. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I felt like prey, cornered by some unseen predator. As I reached the bottom of the stairs, the scratching grew louder. It sounded like something, or someone, was trying to claw their way out of the darkness. I hesitated for a moment, my hand hovering over the light switch. Part of me wanted to turn and run, to get as far away from that basement as possible. But another part of me, the part that was fueled by fear and adrenaline, compelled me to investigate. With trembling hands, I flipped the switch, flooding the basement with harsh fluorescent light. What I saw next made my blood run cold. There, huddled in the corner of the basement, was a figure. It was hunched over, its back to me, its movements jerky and unnatural. It looked like a person, but something about it seemed off. I called out, my voice barely above a whisper. Hello? Is someone there? The figure didn't respond. Instead, it continued to scratch at the concrete floor, its movements growing more frantic by the second. I took a step closer, my heart pounding in my ears. And that's when I saw its face, or rather, what should have been its face. It was blank, devoid of any features, like a smooth mask of flesh. I stumbled backwards, my mind reeling. What was this thing? And more importantly, how had it gotten into the building? Before I could process what was happening, the figure suddenly stopped moving. It turned its head slowly, its featureless face fixing me with empty, soulless eyes. I wanted to scream, 
to run, to get as far away from that thing as possible. But I was frozen, rooted to the spot by a combination of fear and fascination. And then, in the blink of an eye, it was gone. One moment it was there, and the next it had vanished into thin air, leaving behind nothing but an eerie silence. I stood there for what felt like an eternity, trying to make sense of what I had just seen. But deep down, I knew that there was no rational explanation for it. From that night on, I made sure to avoid the basement at all costs. But no matter how hard I tried to forget, the memory of that faceless figure haunted me, a constant reminder that some things are better left unexplained. I remember the time when my girlfriend and I decided to explore this old military base near our new house. It was one of those places that everyone talked about, full of spooky stories and urban legends. We were both intrigued and a little nervous, but mostly excited to see what all the fuss was about. It was late at night when we gathered a few friends and headed over there. We parked in the recreation hall parking lot, trying to be as stealthy as possible. We were about to sneak up the hill when someone noticed a strange light bouncing around in the distance. It would appear for a few seconds and then disappear behind the trees. We brushed it off and continued on our way, but as we reached the part where the trees cleared, we saw something that made our blood run cold. Three figures were coming down the hill towards us. At first, we couldn't make out what they were, but as they got closer, we realized they looked like soldiers, complete with rifles resting on their shoulders. But something wasn't right. Their faces were gray and white, like skulls, and they were wearing skeleton masks. We watched in horror as they passed by, their masks pulled up to reveal their faces. They were just regular guys, smoking cigarettes and chatting casually as they walked back to one of the houses. We were relieved that they weren't ghosts or anything supernatural, but we were still shaken up by the encounter. We decided to get out of there as quickly as possible and headed back home. Looking back, it was probably just a group of guys messing around, but at the time, it felt like we had stumbled upon something truly terrifying. And the thought of what could have happened if we had run into them in the abandoned base still gives me chills. Since then, they've demolished the old base, but the other buildings are still there. I went back to check them out once, but I couldn't shake the feeling that we weren't alone. I saw the shadow of a man leaning against one of the buildings, even though there was no way for anyone to be there. It was enough to send me running back home, never wanting to go near that place again. The memory of that eerie encounter stayed with me long after we left the abandoned military base. It was like a lingering shadow, haunting my thoughts whenever I was alone at night. Despite my unease, curiosity got the better of me, and I found myself drawn back to the sight, eager to unravel its mysteries. One moonless night, fueled by a mix of trepidation and fascination, I returned to the outskirts of the city, where the remnants of the old base stood silent and foreboding. This time, I went alone, armed only with a flashlight and a sense of determination to uncover the truth. As I approached the desolate buildings, a shiver ran down my spine, amplified by the cold breeze that swept through the empty streets. The air seemed thick with anticipation, as if the very walls of the abandoned structures held secrets waiting to be revealed. With cautious steps, I ventured deeper into the heart of the base, my flashlight cutting through the darkness like a beacon of curiosity. Each creak of the floorboards beneath my feet echoed through the stillness, heightening my senses and keeping me on edge. I explored the dilapidated buildings one by one, searching for any clues or signs of the mysterious occurrences that had plagued this place. Shadows danced in the corners of my vision, playing tricks on my mind and feeding my growing unease. Suddenly, a sound echoed through the empty halls, a faint whisper, barely audible over the sound of my own heartbeat. I froze, my breath catching in my throat as I strained to listen. Was it just the wind, or something more sinister? Heart pounding, I followed the sound to its source, my footsteps echoing through the deserted corridors. With each passing moment, the feeling of being watched grew stronger, as if unseen eyes followed my every move. Then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the whispering ceased, leaving behind an eerie silence that hung heavy in the air. I stood alone in the darkness, my senses on high alert, waiting for any sign of what lurked in the shadows. But no further clues revealed themselves, 
and after what felt like an eternity, I made my way back to the safety of the city lights, my mind still racing with unanswered questions. To this day, I can't shake the feeling that there's more to the abandoned military base than meets the eye. Whether it's haunted by restless spirits or harbors darker secrets, I may never know. But one thing's for certain, it's a place I won't soon forget. During the summer of 2018, my girlfriend, Sarah, and I embarked on a road trip across the country. We were eager to explore new places and make memories together. Our journey took us through remote highways and scenic routes, offering glimpses of America's diverse landscapes. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, we spotted an old, abandoned town on the outskirts of a small highway. It seemed frozen in time, with crumbling buildings and a sense of eerie desolation hanging in the air. Despite the late hour, Sarah's adventurous spirit beckoned us to investigate further. As we approached the ghostly town, a chill ran down my spine. The buildings stood as silent witnesses to a forgotten past, their weathered facades whispering tales of bygone days. We tread cautiously, our footsteps echoing in the quiet night. The town appeared deserted, except for a gas station and a dilapidated motel. We decided to camp for the night, setting up our tent amidst the ruins. The darkness seemed to envelop us, intensifying the town's haunting atmosphere. As we settled in for the night, Sarah drifted off to sleep, exhausted from the day's journey. I lay awake, listening to the symphony of nocturnal sounds echoing through the stillness. Suddenly, a faint noise pierced the silence, a murmur of voices drifting on the night breeze. Curiosity peaked. I peered outside the tent and saw two shadowy figures lurking near our car. They whispered furtively, their intentions unclear. Panic gripped me as one of the figures attempted to open the car door, setting off the alarm in a cacophony of sound. Sarah awoke in a daze, and I quickly filled her in on the situation. With adrenaline coursing through our veins, we sprang into action, darting towards the car. In the darkness, the figures vanished like phantoms, leaving us trembling with fear. We wasted no time in fleeing the abandoned town, our hearts pounding with each passing mile. As we drove into the night, our headlights illuminated two ominous figures walking along the roadside, their intent unknown but unmistakably menacing. We never looked back, putting distance between us and the ghostly town. Yet, the memory of that night lingered, a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurked in the darkness. From that moment on, we vowed to tread more cautiously, wary of the unknown that lay ahead on our journey. The encounter left us shaken to the core, casting a shadow of unease over the remainder of our road trip. We found solace in the familiarity of bustling towns and well-lit highways, avoiding remote areas like the plague. Despite our best efforts to put the incident behind us, it continued to haunt our thoughts. Sarah grew increasingly anxious, jumping at every shadow and suspicious noise. I, too, couldn't shake the feeling of being watched as if unseen eyes followed our every move. As we journeyed onward, our once carefree adventure became tinged with paranoia. Every abandoned building, every deserted road, seemed to conceal a hidden threat. The open road, once a symbol of freedom, now felt like a labyrinth of danger and uncertainty. Our relationship strained under the weight of our shared fear, the joy of exploration overshadowed by the specter of danger. Yet, Despite the hardships, we clung to each other, finding strength in our unity against the unknown. Eventually, we reached the end of our road trip, our hearts heavy with relief and exhaustion. Though our journey had been marred by fear and uncertainty, it had also forged a bond between us that transcended the trials we faced. As we returned home, we carried with us the lessons learned from our harrowing experience. No longer blinded by naivety, we approached life with a newfound caution, mindful of the dangers that lurked in the shadows. Though the memory of that fateful night would always linger, it served as a reminder of our resilience in the face of adversity. And as we looked to the future, we did so with a renewed sense of strength and determination, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, together. This happened back in 2012 during my sophomore year of college. 
I was staying in the student dorms at the time. The campus was pretty modern, with most buildings made of glass, except for this one old, run-down brick building. It was five stories tall and surrounded by a tall fence. The place looked like it was about to be torn down to make room for something new. There were a few other construction projects going on around campus, so this building wasn't the only one in disrepair. One evening, I convinced my friends Mike and Alex to come with me and explore the old building. We were all curious about it, and none of us were really scared. It was more of an adventure than anything else. We were just worried about getting caught and getting in trouble. As we approached the building, we saw a campus security officer nearby, but he didn't pay us any attention. We found a gap in the fence and snuck inside, ignoring all the warning signs about trespassing. The building was dark and empty, with nothing but the light from our phones to guide us. We explored the ground floor and then decided to check out the upper floors. But just as we were about to leave, we heard footsteps coming from above. Panic set in as we realized there was someone else in the building with us. We were about to run when we saw a shadowy figure blocking our path down the hallway. It was a man, older than us, with a menacing look on his face. Without a word, we turned and ran in the opposite direction, hoping to find another way out. We managed to escape and head out for a while waiting for the coast to clear before heading back to campus. We never reported what happened because we didn't want to get in trouble for trespassing. The building stayed abandoned for the rest of my time at college, and every time I walked past it, I couldn't help but wonder if that guy was still there, lurking in the shadows. It's a chilling thought, but one that reminds me to always be cautious, especially when exploring abandoned places. Years went by, and I eventually graduated from college and moved on with my life. But the memory of that encounter in the old abandoned building never left me. It left a lingering sense of unease, a feeling that I couldn't shake off no matter how hard I tried. Despite my best efforts to put it behind me, I found myself drawn back to that building, even after leaving campus. I often wondered what had become of the man we saw that night. Did he continue to inhabit the decrepit structure, or did he move on to find shelter elsewhere? One day, Fueled by a mixture of curiosity and trepidation, I decided to revisit the old building. I wanted to confront my fears and lay the ghost of that encounter to rest once and for all. So, I gathered my courage and set out to face the unknown. As I approached the building, I noticed that the fence surrounding it had been reinforced, making it harder to breach. Nevertheless, I managed to find a way inside, just like I had years ago. The interior of the building hadn't changed much since my last visit. It was still dark and eerie, with the same sense of foreboding that had haunted me before. I made my way through the empty hallways, my heart pounding with every step. Suddenly, I heard a noise coming from one of the upper floors. It sounded like footsteps, echoing through the abandoned corridors. My pulse quickened as I realized that I wasn't alone in the building. I hesitated for a moment unsure of what to do next. Should I turn back and leave, or should I press on and confront whatever, or whoever, was up there? Driven by a mixture of curiosity and dread, I summoned the courage to continue. I climbed the stairs to the upper floors, my senses on high alert, ready for whatever awaited me. As I reached the top floor, I saw a faint glimmer of light emanating from one of the rooms. I approached cautiously, my footsteps echoing in the silence. And then, I saw him. The man from years ago, the one we had encountered on that fateful night. He was standing in the room, surrounded by the faint glow of a lantern. But there was something different about him this time. He didn't look angry or menacing like before. Instead, he seemed sad, almost defeated. I hesitated for a moment, unsure of what to say. But then, I remembered the fear and uncertainty that had consumed me during our last encounter. I couldn't let him continue to live like this, trapped in a cycle of loneliness and despair. Summoning all my courage, I stepped forward and spoke to him, offering him help and compassion. And to my surprise, he listened. We talked for hours, sharing our stories and our struggles. In the end, I realized that the man wasn't a threat or a monster. He was just a lost soul searching for a sense of belonging in a world that had forgotten him. As I left the old building that day, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. I had conquered my fears and found a newfound sense of empathy for those who lived on the fringes of society. 
and though I never saw the man again, his memory stayed with me, a reminder of the power of compassion and understanding in a world full of darkness and uncertainty.